All the praises for Allah, who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creation, while he is also the all compelling. He is the only one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death, while death has no effect upon him, because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things, and there is in reality no power and no strength, no influence to cause benefit or detriment except through Him. It is He who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and the speculative, the earth and all that is on it and everything that is in it. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets السلام, with the common message of strict monotheism, which simply means that there is absolutely no one worthy of worship, no one worthy of our obedience except the Almighty, the One, the Absolute, and who has no partners. The earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent, those messages we know have changed. And even the prophets who brought them, their names are now lost. We just know in general because Allah told us in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ I've sent to every nation a messenger calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false gods. This essential message has been preserved in Islam in a way that it was never preserved before. Not because the message was different, because it was the same message, but because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad wasallam. So therefore, that message now had to be protected. It had to be preserved in a way None of the earlier messages were preserved. I will tell you this, what you say, you have come to know 40 years back. And what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book which I read, the Glorious Quran. It's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, Avalam yaral lazine kafru. Do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda kaan tarat kan sakna huma that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. What you're talking about the Big Bang. I try to imagine compressing a spring. I push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller and I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring and when I let it go it bursts out, it bursts out, it bursts out. The creation of the universe which you came to know 40 years back is already mentioned in this book the glorious Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that in the Quran?